So I want to continue the series. We're on part two, Do Not Be Afraid. And I speak about how your mind is like a temple. And when you have isms and idols and false gods and reasons and devils and fears inside your temple, it's going to feel dirty. It's going to feel like you need to wash it. Everyone washes their hands. You don't just take one shower for your life and then you're done. You have to shower yourself every day, hopefully. And when it comes to your mind, you want to clean your mind. You want to cleanse your mind from these these blockages because they don't really belong there. And as I've said, you have to overcome the mountains that are in front of you and you have to overcome the reason that is in you. For these things are going to feel like blockages when you go to change your state of awareness. You don't need any physical thing on the outside to change your state of awareness. But when you come into this knowledge um, from Neville's work, you're given a, a sense of a power, and it can feel almost frightening to use it. You can almost feel afraid to change. But you should actually be more afraid, if you must be afraid of something, you should actually be afraid of staying exactly where you're at. For you, what you sow is what you reap. And so you're going to keep, it's actually the failure to change your state of awareness is what you should be afraid of. You should never be afraid of changing. You should never be afraid of expanding one's awareness. There's nothing to fear to expand your awareness to the forgiveness of your sin or the change in your awareness or the change in your state of mind. If it's something you need to let go of, you should never be afraid of letting go if that's what you want. You should never feel afraid to actually imagine what you want to imagine. It's not about your reason that you have to satisfy. You don't have to satisfy reason. You have to satisfy yourself. And that is exactly what we're doing. We're changing self. We're changing our own I amness, our own state of awareness about ourselves. And that's what you fear as well. When you fear something's going to happen to you, you're actually afraid of the concept you're going to have to believe about yourself. If you fear rejection, you actually fear being unwanted. It's not about the rejection. The rejection there is more of a a catalyst to fulfill the feeling of I'm unwanted. You don't have to be afraid of being wanted. You don't have to be afraid of taking that. It's a state that is in you. It's a, it's a, an awareness that all you do, all you have to do is expand yourself to it. You don't have to be deserving of it. It's not about deserving. You know, we can have so many reasons as to why we get annoyed that somebody got what they wanted. We can put our own judgment on it. But what we're doing is that when we judge someone, for what they got, and we don't think that they deserved it. We're actually doing that to ourselves. That's why we have that judgment. We actually do that to ourselves. So when you imagine for yourself, instead of trying to imagine for someone you don't like, start with yourself. So you would take your take your ego out of it when you go to imagine for yourself. It's not about whether you're deserving or undeserving. It's not about that. It's about a change of awareness, and you never have to be afraid to change. Never let anyone convince you to be afraid to change your awareness. If you want to see yourself as brilliant, don't let anyone fear you into not expanding your awareness to that. But if you are going to see yourself new, you have to not be afraid of giving up the present conception of yourself. Don't be afraid to let it go. You don't need it to survive. You're, you can survive just as easily with the new perception or the new conception of yourself. So when you start with imagining with yourself without the ego there, without your judgment upon yourself, your judgment doesn't really matter. This is about exercising the imagination. This is about if you want to personify him or personify the imagination, make it into a him if you want to. And it's about exercising him, the one within you. you you're not about, it's not about judging people. It's about regardless of your judgment, you imagine success for yourself and for them and see if it works. We're, te- we're, we're trying to go beyond our judgment of the world. We're here to exercise him. But we have to let him play his part. You know, when I go to a dinner party, I don't try to make people uncomfortable. I, I have a role to play at the dinner party. I play that role. And the same is true for the inner man. You let him play his role. And his role is to see beyond the senses. It's, it's to feel the fulfillment or experience the fulfillment. You let him play his role. And so you let him be the state that you want to be in. You experience it within because he's able to or you're able to. It's really just you. So the inner man will play his part as the outer man plays his own part. And if you could see that it's these isms, it's these conditions that you're placing, these, this reason, these are all conditions that are actually making you afraid. It's when you let go of them, 
you don't become afraid anymore because you're allowed to be in the state you want to be in. You're, once you free yourself, once you free your imagination from having to bow to senses only, you can actually start to feel yourself and be the state you want to be in. You don't have to wait anymore. You don't have to wait for someone to change first. You don't have to wait for the greedy people to become selfless. You don't have to wait for the, the mean to be kind. You don't have to wait for the evil to overcome. You don't have to wait for anything. You start with yourself now. Without judgment, you change. And so if you want security, you don't fear having it. You don't place a physical condition upon it. You simply start to feel yourself to be secure. That is your new state of mind. That you're, you expanded your awareness to security. Maybe you only have known insecurity. Maybe your awareness is only known insecurity and fear. But you expand yourself beyond it. You go beyond what you're comfortable with. And you can make yourself uncomfortable with something good. And when you do it in love, you're doing it in truth. So you never have to doubt it. Whatever you do in love towards yourself, you never have to doubt it because it's done in truth because they're coupled together. And so this is a process of changing. It's a process of changing one's way of imagining. And so instead of shaming yourself, instead of fearing, you change. Change will always be your answer no matter what it is. No matter what comes your way, change. Remember that answer. If you want to free yourself from certain bondage that is within you, you don't wait for someone to do it. You change yourself into the freed version of yourself. And as Neville said, do not be afraid to keep on growing but you'll be willing at any moment in time to let it go because you're going to let it go anyways. And what he means is that eventually we're going to pass through this plane of existence called the world of death. So eventually we're going to let go of all of this anyways. But you start now to let go of the things that you feel aren't serving you within. You start within. Don't, don't worry about the outside. As it says, like your body's a temple and people get so concerned as what they put into their bodies from the outside. But that's not really the important part. The Bible is all about God, your relationship with God. And so the temple, it's really what's more important is whose temple is it? It says your body is the temple of the living God. Be more concerned with that second part. Whose temple is it? It's the temple of the living God. Try to understand what that means and practice that. Put it to, put it to the test, see if it's true. Don't just take my word for it. Start to imagine yourself differently and see if it's true. See if it starts to come about in your world. See if, if you're changing awareness if that is all it takes to actually change your life, see if that's true. And then you'll see that you don't need to go to anyone else on the outside to change your awareness. You don't need to even wait. You don't need to change someone first. You don't need to do anything other than change your or expand your awareness. And so if you have people in your world that you feel are doubting, you let them doubt. Let them have what they want and you have what you want. If they say that they don't see it or they, they call you crazy, it doesn't really matter if it works. If it continues to work in your life, it doesn't really matter what anyone says. And so instead of becoming afraid of this power, test it. And we are testing our own I amness. And our, our own I amness is our own awareness of being. That is what we change. We see if that's the Lord of our life. We see if that is actually our God. Because if you don't see it that way, then you're going to serve something else on the outside of you. And it's never going to be enough. And when you see that it's your own awareness that is, becomes the Lord of your life, you won't be afraid of the senses so bad. You'll see more of a symbolic message with your world. You will see that your life is telling you something about your awareness. And if you don't know what's happening in your life, then you must be unaware of what's happening within you. Become aware of what you're doing on the inside. That's, what's, that's what you need to concern yourself more. It's not about what you heard years ago or what was said it's what you're saying to yourself now it's what you're imagining it's not what you have imagined but what you're imagining now change what you're imagining now change what you're imagining within the present change what you're aware of being now don't wait until tomorrow don't think that you know, i'll change myself in a week from now you don't need to wait for the senses to catch up with you you don't need to wait for the senses to be different for you to be different and if you're afraid, you can just see this in the sense of forgiveness. That's, that's what this is. A change of awareness is forgiveness of sin. That's what you're doing. You're forgiving yourself the moment you move into a better position within yourself. What you conceive of better. And remember, this is what you want, not what the world tells you to want. You really have to sit down and ask yourself what it could be something small, but you just ask yourself what you want. 
truly what you want, and it'll be effortless to accept it. Once you figure out what you want, when you try to just put yourself within like what you think you should want, what you think you should have, it might be a struggle to accept it. But once you really figure out what you desire, it becomes effortless. It becomes natural to just feel that you have it, and then you will. And so when you you can take the message that whatsoever you desire, believe you have it and you will. Many times people will ask me, well, what do I do after I believe it? I'm like, I, I just tell them to slow down and first believe you have it. And then you'll know what to do. If you can arouse yourself to feel that you have it, it will feel natural. Until that naturalness is achieved, there's going to be a conflict within you. But you're the victor of it if you allow yourself to let it go. And if you fear what will happen next, you will never take that leap of faith within yourself to accept something new about yourself. And so you have to let the fear go. You have to transcend the fear. You have to transcend what is within you. Whatever is blocking you from accepting whatever fear it is, you have to transcend it because there's no one else to do it but yourself. No one else can actually overcome the fears that you have within you. These are your fears. These are your problems. As Neville says, you look at your fears right in the eye and you overcome them. You find its imaginal solution. And then you accept that. And so never be afraid. If fear is your problem, you don't have to be afraid. Never be afraid to assume something about yourself. Don't be afraid of what will happen next. You just focus on having it. Whatsoever you desire, believe you have it and you will. Focus on that part, the believing you have it. Try to understand and figure out how you do that. That is the important part. The you will have it comes after. But first, you have to believe you have it. But for me, in my case, I was afraid to actually have it. I was afraid of change until I saw that I should be more afraid of remaining the same. Once I saw that, it was very easy for me to let it go and to dive into the pools within me that I wanted to be in. It wasn't so scary after all to move. And once you start to move in the ways you want to move, it becomes, you start to see that it's not about your judgment. It wasn't about deserving. It wasn't about your fear. It's not necessarily about you. It's about give, It's about giving. You can say it's about forgiving, but it's about giving yourself what you want and living from this new way of imagining, which is an act of giving constantly. Like I said, you don't take one shower for your life. You don't just eat one piece of bread and you're full for the rest of your life. It's a daily bread. It's a daily prayer. It's a daily acceptance. It's a daily change. Paul has said, I die daily. He dies daily to himself, within himself, daily. It's something you do and something you live. And you live from this way, and the way is from within to without. And when you live from this way, it causes a conflict within because it goes against your senses. It goes against what you were taught about yourself. But you're the victor. You will be the victor of this. All it takes is your willingness to accept the new state of yourself. Willing to accept yourself. That is all it's going to take. And so don't, don't ever be afraid and don't let anyone ever scare you into moving within yourself. I don't care what the outside is showing you. You do not have to be afraid to obtain something within. You don't have to be afraid of letting something go. You're always allowed to move and you allow the, to the degree you move within is up to you. You're allowed to move as much as you want. You're allowed to be as free as you want. There's no true restriction. I can't find one. I couldn't find one. I couldn't find a limit to forgiveness within myself. And the same will be true for you. You won't find the limit. So don't look for it. Just keep forgiving. You don't have to be afraid either. Because in the end, there's only love. And there's no fear in love. Perfect love will cast out all fears. And, and as I said, it's always coupled with truth. And so you never have to fear that you're lying to yourself if you do it in love. There is just no lie there. And then you'll see that the lie is in fear. You'll always see that your fears are a lie. And they only became true because you believed in them. And I know I've been gone for a bit. I just had to contemplate on a few things within myself and I needed some time. But this is just part two. I'm going to continue the series. Um, I'm going to continue writing it. I'm also available if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, just email me and I'll give you a message that will tell you every all the details and everything. But just keep a lookout on my Reddit page. I'm going to continue writing this. 
And I have about four parts right now, so I'm going to be doing the third part soon. Uh, thank you for listening.